Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're in Cork City and we're here to find the final resting place of Nano Nagel and I'm going to tell you the story about Nano Nagel as well. Um, it's an amazing story and uh, a very interesting final resting place for her. So if Nano Nagel was alive today she would be the kind of person to win a Nobel Prize. Before her death in 1784 Nano had opened seven schools for poor children across Cork City, founded an almshouse for poor women and most notably founded the Presentation Order, who continue her education and social inclusion work today. Now I went to the Presentation uh, Secondary School in Wexford so I would have heard about Nano there. She was born to a wealthy Catholic family in 1718. Honoria Nagel was given the pet name Nano by her father. The Nagel family home at Ballygriffin near Mallow was on the banks of the river Blackwater. So let's go now and have a look around the place. Nano experienced an idyllic childhood with her younger siblings. The repressive penal laws meant that education for Catholics was not available in Ireland and Irish Catholics were forbidden from travelling to the continent to be educated. Despite this, Nano's family had Nano educated in France. Afterwards, she went to Paris to live with her relatives. And as you can see, the area is very, very busy. But a series of life-changing events inspired Nano to devote her life to the service of the poor. On her way home from a ball in Paris, she saw paupers mustering around the church door in search of alms. When Nana's father died and she and her sister Anne returned to Dublin to be with their mother, Nana began visiting poor families with Anne. Anne died suddenly, quickly followed by her mother. Nana decided she would devote her life to helping the poor. At first she thought this might be achieved by entering a religious order and travelled to Paris and joined a convent. But Nano found that her life of religious enclosure allowed her little access to the needy. She felt her vocation was to offer poor Catholic children the chance to better their lives and engage in their religion through education. She made up her mind to leave the convent and return to Ireland to live with her brother Joseph and his wife Frances. In memory of Nano Nagel's first companions, Elizabeth Burke, in religious sorry, in religion Mary Augustine, who died in 1783 and was buried in St. John's Cemetery. Mary Fauhi in religion, Mary Joseph who died 1794 and was buried in Kilworth Cemetery. So since under the penal laws operating a Catholic school could result in three months imprisonment, Nano had to work in secret. She began by opening a school in 1750. This girl's school focused on reading, writing, Catholic religious instruction and needlework. Within 10 years, demand for the education which Nano provided was such that she was operating seven schools across the city of Cork, teaching both boys and girls. When Nano's family moved to Bat, Nano took a small cottage on Cove Street. By day, she visited each school and by night, she visited the poor of the Cork City. Now this was dark and treacherous work. The city streets were neither lit nor policed. Nano travelled by the light of the lantern she carried and across the city of Cork she became known as Miss Nagel, the Lady of the Lantern. In the 1760s, Nano began to plan for the future of her educational mission. In 1771, she used money inherited from her wealthy uncle to build a convent for the Ursuline sisters, a teaching order whom she invited from France. 
Nano's tireless work in the schools across the city. And for the poor of Cork, could never have been done if she were a sister in an enclosed order, as the Ursula sisters were. Thus, she founded her own order, the Institute of Charitable Instruction of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in 1775. She and three followers promised poverty, chastity, and obedience to God until death, but they did not take enclosure and continued to teach and care for the poverty stricken where they lived. Now for five years, the small cottage near Nano's first school on modern day Douglas Street, just south of Cork city centre was their first convent. Nano then built a small convent on the same street. Nano's long days and constant walking across the city took a toll on her health and she died at the age of just 66 in 1784. During her life full of such remarkable achievement, she had wondered if there could be any greater joy in heaven than she had gained from teaching the children of Cork. Her order, the Presentation Sisters, have continued her mission across the world and into this present day. Now, as I said, I went to the Presentation Convent and that is where I would have learned all of, you know, Nano's work. This is um, a little cemetery that we've been walking through trying to avoid people that are coming and going because it is so busy. Now you will have to excuse me because I was trying to tell the story but there has been a lot of people kind of coming and going. So as you can see, see this is a convent cemetery and uh, we have some from 1914 but we have more older ones Francis Kearney here in religion, PBV, Mary Alphonsus, 1853, aged just 29, so very, very young there. And you might see as well that all these headstones are exactly the same, some obviously newer looking. We have 1804 down here. Mary Kavna and in religion Mary Ursula December the 18th 1804 age 65 and then beside Mary we have Lucy Kavna and in religion Mary Bernard 1787 age 52 so I wonder is that one possibly the oldest one here this place is absolutely gorgeous. We have a lift that we use to come down. We have a beautiful, like a waterfall, this beautiful glass. Now what I'm going to show you first is the, it actually says it here, Nano Nagel's tomb, 1984. Nano's first tombstone. 1784 to 1877 stands against the south wall. So I'm going to bring you to there first. The earthly remains of Nano Nagel were placed in this tomb the 20th of April, sorry, the 26th of April, 1984, just there. And if we walk up here, it says this is the Celtic cross that was um, on Nano's tomb from 1877 to 1983. A beautiful cross indeed. Erected to the memory of Nano Nagel, who departed this life the 26th of April, 1784 by her devoted children in commemoration of the first centenary of the presentation order. But now, as we pass the lift, into this beautiful area. Look at this.
And then right behind me, we have the final resting place of Nano Nagel. And in here, we have a coffin. We have a plaque on top of the coffin. But what is really interesting is this little door. And people are asked to open the door, place your hand on her coffin, and say a prayer. <laughs> to Nano Nagel. This says, here lie waiting, tis hoped, a glorious resurrection, the remains of Miss Honora Nagel, daughter of Gareth Nagel of Ballygriffin, Esquire and Venerable founders of this monastery, S. Ursula and the Institute of the Charitable Instruction whole life and fortune were always devoted to the service of God and of the poor. And it just goes on to say that she looked after the poor children. She departed this life envied by many and regretted by all on the 26th of April, 1784, age 65. And somebody has left some tiny little posy of flowers there. And even from the other side, you can see this beautiful stained glass. It's absolutely stunning. You go around here. And that is a coffin there. So we're actually going to take a walk now. Back down to where I started the video. Because it got so busy, I had to kind of leave. And then it was busy up here. And it's not easy kind of telling the story when there are so many people coming and going. So what you see there is actually a crypt. Erected by the Brethren of the Presentation Monastery. And just beneath, it's actually um, a crypt for Christian brothers. So what you can see actually in there, it goes down these steps. And it is padlocked, closed, but there's like little niches in there. I might get the torch to... Uh, Kind of give you a glimpse inside. So just give you a, an idea. Just in there, to the left and to the right, we have niches there. Unfortunately, I can't read any of them. We've some empty spaces as well. So I wonder, will they continue to to use this, probably a better angle there, all right, there is names on it. And as I said, down at the bottom, there may have some empty niches, but there it says, the Presentation Brothers lived in the South Monastery 
from 1827 to 1971, this vault was the Presentation Brothers burial place until the cemetery at Mount St. Joseph Blarney Street was opened in 1892. And it gives a list of names there, anything from Timothy Vincent Reardon, 1846, right down to Timothy Malachy McSweeney, 1906. So I'm presuming all those people are in there, although it doesn't seem to be that there is that many niches filled. But just down the street we have Nano Nagel's, um, you know, one of the convents that she made or one of the schools. So she helped the poor and, you know, it was a different time back then. You weren't allowed to teach um, the Catholic religion. And uh, as you heard from the story, you know, you'd be sent to prison. And uh, may they all rest in peace. And Nano Nagel, thank you for helping the poor and educating people, not only in Cork, but as I said, I went to presentation school in Wexford. So may she rest in peace. Just get a last glimpse there of the little cemetery, little graveyard as we go up. Now obviously you can take the steps but it's uh, kind of nice to be able to use a lift so there is a museum in there as well. But they have done amazing work here. Let's just take a walk down. There's a cafe shop and everything here actually. modern piece of art. This bench says in memory of Sister Joan Brosnan. And I can smell the coffee actually coming from the, the little cafe, but I just wanted to show you how beautiful it is here. So this is the convent that is here on site. Just as we were exiting, I just seen this 1771 building, Miss Nagel's Parlour. And there's a huge building. We have even a bell here. Original, I'm sure.
So we're just standing outside this amazing building and this is the museum and there's a gift shop and everything then and then the graveyard is out the back and it's wrapped around the beautiful Goldie Chapel. Look at that, it's gorgeous, the colour of it. And then we've just some illustrations there about Nana Nagel and her helping the, the poor and teaching children. So just down here, this is Douglas Street in Cork. This was a, a school, a convent school. It says Abbey View. So, an old building. There's a plaque down here I want to show you. beautiful door. You have to excuse the noise. So it says Nano Nagel, pioneer of the Catholic education in the English speaking world, began her life work here about 1754. She founded the Presentation Congregation in 1775 and then we visited her grave. hard to get a, a good shot at it. I might cross the road just to have a look. It actually looks like it. it's part of an old school now and maybe flats or something even in it now. So that's where it all began. Right so guys so that's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment down below the video. Let me know where you're from. And Nana Nagel, rest in peace. Okay, guys, God bless.